The Internet of Things is the next wave of computing, pushing computing beyond laptops and mobile devices into our everyday surroundings. Ten years from now, what you might envision are devices that you can wear on your wrist or on your chest, or maybe that get integrated into your clothing. So when you just put your clothing on normally every day, you're now not just putting on a shirt, but you're putting on technology. And that technology is connected to your phone, and it's feeding new information to it. For example, the air quality, your galvanic skin response, your core body temperature, and your heart rate. And let's say from those four parameters, you can make predictions on whether or not you're about to have an asthma attack. That is sort of the essence of the Internet of Things. It's ubiquitous computing, computing you don't necessarily see, you don't necessarily know it's there, but it's improving you know, your well-being or improving your life. The Internet of Things is envisioned to be tens to hundreds of billions, even trillions of devices in the next 10 to 12 years. If each one of those devices is powered by a battery and that device has a 10-year lifetime, we would be changing on average about 300 million batteries a day across the globe. I think that's pretty important. That's a pretty important driver on why we focus on low power circuits and low power systems. My group at Michigan works on uh, ultra low power wireless integrated circuits and systems. If sensors could gather information, you can boil that information down and, and build a probabilistic model around it. Then from your sense data locally, you could make quick decisions without having to send all the sense data up to the cloud. You can save a lot of energy, both in the amount of traffic as well as processing. The Internet of Things exists here today. Not in the volumes that everyone is envisioning, but it's already here. It's not going to be an issue of, I want to buy a, a Galaxy phone versus an iPhone. It's, I'm going to buy this fertilizer, and I'm going to sprinkle it on my plant, and I'm going to download the fertilizer app, and the app on my phone is going to tell me when to water my plant or tell me how my plant's doing. And I'm not going to know where that computing exists, nor will I care. But my plant's going to be a lot better off. One of the things that fascinates and interests me is when we get to the point that we can engineer the bodies to go along with the artificial minds, what would motivate it? What would drive its behavior? Why would it do what it does?